cause trouble. Bringing children here to cause trouble. What is that, my Moms, dads, and babies, okay? Lord, we thank you for this day. It's a day that you have made, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you, God, that you are the life giver. But not only the life giver, you are the life sustainer of all that exists. God, you alone have the authority to give life and to take it away. So, God, we pray right now. We pray for mothers. We pray for the mom right now who is contemplating. Uh, we pray for the mom right now, God, who is has has really has exhausted all other options, has 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 sought help, and nobody's there to help her. And yet, this place deceitfully claims that they are here to help her. God, we pray that you would bring about in her heart a true understanding of what she's contemplating. God, that she would love her child as you've called her to. God, we pray for fathers this week who many of them will drive their wife or their girlfriend with their child here to this place to have them snuffed out. God, we pray that you would give them a spirit not of fear or cowardice, but of power. And God, we do thank you that you have, you've created men to lead. And we know that this is just as much a men's issue as it is a woman's issue. And so God, we pray for men to be men, to lead their wives well. God, to be willing to lay their lives down for the sake of their children, as you've called us as men to do. God, we thank you for the picture of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are a good father to us. We thank you for our adoption into the kingdom of God, that we were once enemies uh, in enmity with you, shaking our fists at you in rebellion, and yet you and your grace, you chased us down, and you adopted us into your family. And God, we understand that abortion is the exact antithesis of what the gospel message is. Jesus, you came into the world and you said, I give my life for your sake. And yet abortion flips that on its head and says, I give the life of my child for my sake. And so God, would you, would you stir in the hearts of these moms and these dads to understand what they're taking part in, to understand God, that what they will, what they are taking part in is something that you say that you hate. God, you tell us that you hate the hands that shed innocent blood. But God, we do thank you that though we hated you and act in hatred towards you, you and your grace and your mercy, you saved us. And so God, we pray for our Sidewalk Outreach team this week who will be out here to intercede. God, we pray that you give them favor in their conversations with these mothers and fathers. God, we pray for those who, who preach the gospel over the fence. God, that you would give them favor. You would season their speech with grace. God, as they speak to moms, and they speak to dads. God, I, I pray that you give them wisdom to be able to speak in a way that is pleasing to you. God, we pray for the, the, the men that they would be spoken to in a stern way. God, knowing that they, as leaders, are going to be held accountable for what's taking place. And so, God, we pray for these moms and for these dads who have appointments here this week. We pray, God, that you would, by any means, keep them from this place. Keep them from taking part in such wickedness. God, that you would, uh, you, you, would, you would be gracious and save these little precious babies. God, we thank you for uh, the baby, the precious image bearer that was saved yesterday. We thank you for those who stood here. I thank you for Brother Jack and Brother Neil who stood here uh, to intercede and to, to offer help and hope. And God, we know that they may be moms and dads that are looking for any reason to not take part in this wickedness. God, would you use our outreach team to be that reason? To in. So God, we want to yeah. pray right now for all of those who are involved in abortion. I want to pray for, for Comrade right, right now, God. I want to pray for him. God, I pray that you would bring him to an end of himself. God, I pray that you would you would cause him to cease this pretending, this facade that he's here to protect women. God, I pray that you would even come bring him to an understanding of even what a woman is. It's so interesting. A man that can't even tell us what a woman is is here to protect women. God, would you would you cease this pretending? God, would you bring him to an end of himself? God, like me, would you would you cause that heart that is so deceitful and wicked that he's following after right now, would you, in your grace and mercy, crush that stony heart and replace it with a heart of flesh? God, would you put your spirit within him? Would he have a zeal not for death but for life? And not just for, the, for life but for the life giver. God, we pray for zeal for the kingdom of God and not zeal for the kingdom of darkness. We pray, God, again, in your kindness, would you save this brother? God, we pray for Ka uh, Kawani. We pray for Cassidy. 
We pray for all of those who stand out here in opposition to your church. We pray for all those who stand in celebration of the murder of children. God, we pray again that you would be gracious to them. God, I thank you that you've given Comrade even today, another day, to inhale and to exhale, that you allowed him to roll out of bed today. You allow him even right now the life and the, the ability with his tongue to curse you right now. We thank you for that grace. God, we pray that he would come to understand that today is the day of salvation, that your grace is sufficient for him. God, would you give him that? Would you cause him, Lord God, to fall prostrate today in repentance and faith and come to, the, to Jesus who offers himself for the sake of sinners? God, would he be a zealous man for the kingdom of God? Would he be a zealous man for precious little women? The little women who are being snuffed out. The little women who are being taken away to death. The little women who are being killed by these doctors without any opportunity to, to, to shout or to yell or, or to say uh, anything. They're being snuffed out. They have no voice. And so, God, I pray that you give them a consistent care for human beings, both born and unborn. But, God, we pray today for Dr. Campbell and Dr. Buffkin these men who have taken part in the shedding of innocent blood for so long. And God, we know that your grace is sufficient for them. We know, God, that you can save them. But God, we do know that the fruit of repentance is to cease bloodshed. And so, God, we pray that you would close this place by regenerative means, that you would save Dr. Campbell and Dr. Buffkin, and through that salvation, they would run from this place, they would shut its doors down, and that the murder of children would would cease happening here at 1142 Grove Road. We pray for them, God, that you would bring them bring about reconciliation and revival, that you would bring them again to the end of themselves, bring them to an understanding of what they're taking part in and what they've taken part in for so long. God, in that time where they revealed that and they, they, their conscience is bearing weight, God, would you offer to them what you offer to the sinner, which is forgiveness and mercy and grace and compassion. God, we thank you for that compassion today. We thank you for that grace today, that grace that is greater than all of our sins. We pray for all of those who are involved in abortion that they would come to find the grace that you offer. God, we want to lift up our, our prayers today for our leaders of this city. God, I pray for Hobart Lewis, our sheriff. God, I pray that you would bring him to a consistent use of the law. We thank you for that law that is a suppression of evil. It is a grace that you have given to us. And so, God, I pray for, uh, for, for, for Greenville County Sheriff's Office, God, that they would be lawful towards those that are out here, that they would enact the law with equal weights and measures. And, God, I pray for Hobart as a, as a lesser magistrate, God, that he has the power even right now to say we're not going to have babies murdered in our county. He has the power to do that. He has the power to come and put a chain on this door and say we will not kill children in the county of Greenville. God, I pray that you would bring him to do that and that he would be willing to lay his life down for the sake of his neighbor. We thank you, God, for his proclamation of faith. But God, we pray that you would give him a consistent working out of that proclamation. That God, he would cease being so afraid of the culture of death. He would cease being so afraid of the liberal order in this city, but he would stand principally on what you've said. God, we thank you. We thank you for the leadership that you've given to us. We thank you for the authorities that you have set up but we do know that they are authorities not autonomous to you. They are authorities that come from you and they answer, God, to you. So we want to lift up again the Freedom Caucus today. We pray, God, that you would give them the courage to stand principally on what you have said concerning unborn children. And, God, they would make it a principal teaching, a principal pillar of what the Freedom Caucus is about. Equal protection for all children, uh, all human beings in the state of South Carolina. And God, you would continue to raise up men like Rob Harris and Josiah Magnuson and Thomas Beach, men who are principled Christian men who stand as a legislator understanding that their, uh, their authority is not autonomous to them, but it comes from you. And so, God, we pray for men and women in our, in our, uh, in our state, in our county, God, that you would bring them to a consistent understanding of civil government and who it ultimately answers to. Lord, we thank you that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, that there is no aspect of this world that you don't have all authority over. And so, God, we pray that those would come to understand that you have authority within the civil realm as well, and that they would govern in such a way that is consistent with what you've said. So, God, we do thank you today.
for these leaders. We thank you, God, for the grace that the law is, the deterrent that the law is. But we also know, God, that the law cannot save. The law in and of itself has no power to save. And so, God, as we pray for our, our, for our civil leaders, we also pray, God, that your church would be united. They would be united on what you've said concerning all human beings. We would be united with one voice saying that life begins at conception, that all life is precious regardless of how life has been conceived. And they, they are precious not because we can think better, not because we're able to build skyscrapers, but we are, we are precious because we are created in the image of the triune God. God, we would be unified on that message that we ought not to shed the blood of the innocent, that we should not murder. And God, that there are penalties for those who shed the innocent blood, the blood of innocent uh, human beings. And God, we would be united on what you've said. But not only would we be united as your church, God, we would also be mobilized. We would be moved in love and affection for you and for our neighbor. So, God, we pray for the church in South Carolina. They would awake from their stupor. They would awake from their sleep, as the Apostle Paul says. That we would not only not take part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them for what they are. God, we pray for your church. That, God, we would be provocative, not for provocative sake, but because the gospel is provocative. That the light that the gospel is, it reveals to mankind their sin. It reveals the wickedness of our city and our state and individuals. God, the salt of the earth, it, it penetrates that festering wound and it provokes. God, will we be willing to provoke? Would we be willing, as Brother Michael said today, to suffer this day for righteousness' sake? And God, we long for the day that, that Brother Michael spoke of where that trumpet sounds and the Lord Jesus, you return. And as Philippians 3 tells us, you transform our lowly bodies to be like your glorious body. We long for that day, God, where all of these things will be the footstool, where that final enemy death will be judged personally. But until that day, God, you call us to be faithful. So we pray. We pray for your church, the church you died for. We pray for pastors, God, that they would come to a, an understanding. They would come to a godly sorrow, as Paul says, that leads to repentance. And they would lead, as Brother Michael has, has done so, so, so graciously this week, they would lead their sheep to do something. God, we know not everybody can do what I do. We're not, not everybody is, is called to do what I do. But we do know that everyone can do something. So God, I pray for the saints that are here, God, that you would you would move in their hearts. God, you would reveal to them something that they can do. And God, that you would, in your church, allow space for this issue, knowing that there are a, a plethora of issues that plague our nation. But God, we know that you judge entire nations because of this one sin. And so God, would we, would we be able to categorize that well? And understand that it's this sin, it's this issue, it's the shedding of innocent blood that brings about all the other things that we see. And it's the judgment of God that brings about all of the things that we see with our eyes today. And God, we know that you have said that judgment begins in the household of God. And so God, we pray that your church here in South Carolina, God, that we, we would repent. We would repent of our apathy. We would repent and we would turn. And in, our, in that faith, we would be obedient. God, we're thankful. We're thankful for the Lord Jesus who showed us what it looks like to love God and to love our neighbor. We're thankful today, God, that Jesus doesn't hold us to a standard that he wasn't willing to hold himself to. As he tells us, if we desire to be his disciple, we come to him to die. We come and deny ourselves and take up a cross and we follow after Jesus. We come to him in death. God, we're thankful that he's not a hypocrite. Lord Jesus Days after you commanded that of your church, you showed us what it looks like to deny yourself. You took up a real Roman cross and you, you followed the will of your father up Golgotha's hill and you gave your life for the sake of your people. And today, God, you call us to do the same. And so God, we pray for your church. We pray, God, that they would be stirred to love and affection, to love and good works with regard to the least of these in our city. God, we long for the day and we pray for the day that revival hits our streets, that righteousness permeates our land. God, we understand that we have a long and arduous task ahead of us. God, I pray that your church first would do something. But God, we know that when, when the church begins to, to be a prophetic voice once again, I pray that you would give them courage, that you would give them stamina, knowing, God, that when that begins to happen, the fiery darts of the enemy begin to come. 
So God, I pray for our pastors. I pray for Brother Michael, God, that you would you would protect him and his family. God, that you would protect his church. That as they stand to be a prophetic voice for the least of these in our city, God, that you would protect them as the attacks from the enemy certainly come. And God, we thank you for the men who have stood and said, this is what our church is going to be a part of. And God, we pray that you would protect them, that you would protect their ministries. God, I pray for the ministry of, of, of this church, God, that they would, they would be obedient to love God and to love their neighbor. God, I pray for Brother Michael that he would, he would be obedient to lead the sheep. Thank you for the watchers on the wall in our city, the pastors, the men who you've equipped, God, to be the prophetic voice. And I pray once again we would be that prophetic voice and that, God, you would use your church led by your shepherds uh, to bring about the revival that we so desperately desire to see in our city. God, as we begin to... To, to get ready to walk back to the church, we pray, Lord Jesus, as, you, as you've taught us to pray. We pray, God, that your name would be hallowed in the earth, that it would be holied in the earth. We pray, God, that, that you would forgive us of our transgressions. And, God, you would give us, you would empower us to be able to, to forgive those who have sinned against us. God, we ask this day that you would lead us in the way of the righteous. You would lead us onto the narrow path, knowing, God, that it is not right, it's, it's not natural for us to desire what is righteous in your sight. But, God, you would lead us in that way, and you would keep us from the way of unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, we pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done here in Greenville, South Carolina, as it is in heaven. And, God, you would use simple acts of obedience by your people, willing to, to suffer for righteousness' sake to bring that to pass, God. And God, we long for the day the prophets speak of that the whole earth is going to be as full of the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And God, until that day comes, may we be found simply obedient. So God, we pray for your church. We pray, God, for righteousness to permeate our streets. And we pray for the end of the scourge of abortion. God, that you would bring an end to it. You would bring an end to the murder of innocent children in our city, in our state, in our nation. God, that our nation would, would turn in repentance to you. And God, the obedience of this nation doing that, you would enact your grace and your mercy. God, once again, I pray for a comrade. I pray, God, that this facade, this little pretending act would come to an end. God, that you would save him. God, that he would not have an ounce of peace. And God, what he's showing us today is he has no peace. But Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. And so, God, we pray in your kindness that you would enact and bring it about for him. But God, as long as he rebels, as long as he stands in, in direct opposition to you, we pray, God, that you would bring him low. That all of his schemes would come to an end. And God, we thank you that even those who, who, who conspire against you and against your anointed, you tell us that you sit in the heavens and you laugh. And you hold them in derision. So, God, I pray for all the schemes that, that Comrade is, is, is beginning to think up in his mind, that they would come to nothing. But Lord, God, we, we pray that in your kindness you would save this man. And that the zeal that he has this day in hatred for you and your church, in hatred for unborn children, that zeal can be reoriented to a love for you, God, and a love for our neighbor. And that we would, we would see Comrade as a, as a picture of the grace of God on behalf of the sinner, just like it is for me. So, God, as we head back to the church, we pray again that you would stir in the hearts of your people to do something. We ask it in the name of Jesus, our King. Amen. Amen.
identity. You have no spirituality. You are an atheist masquerading as a monotheist and a troublemaker. A troublemaker!